Serving the North State since 1858, Scott Valley Bank is proud to support original local programming, including the Forum on KIXE. Scott Valley Bank, member FDIC. I'm Karen Hoyt, Marketing Director at Shasta Regional Medical Center, and we're proud to be part of the conversation that the Forum at KIXE is bringing to our community. Shasta Regional has been around for more than 60 years supporting our community, and we would like to invite you to be a part of the Forum on KIXE. Together, we can support the community that gives us back so much. Thank you. Welcome to the Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and our guest today, Ryan Arnold, the spokesperson for Sierra Nevada, Bre Nevada Brewery. Yes, so, we're lucky to have you here today. You guys you are doing thank great you. business. We yes. love hearing about what's happening down with Sierra Nevada. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the company and how it got started. Sure. First of all, I, I should say, before that, let's say about you. How did you end up here with us today? Well, I, I moved to Chico about a year and a half ago. I was living in Denver, Colorado. And much like California, Colorado has a really great craft beer scene. So I was getting more and more interested in craft beer and I was starting to homebrew my own beer mm -hmm. and that ultimately led me to ask what kind of jobs might exist in my communications field mm -hmm. within the craft beer industry and I was fortunate to stumble upon the Sierra Nevada opportunity so that's mm -hmm. how I ended up in Northern California. Great. So you took your passion mm -hmm. and you found something that connected with your education Yes. and then you moved to Chico which mm -hmm. is where you found, how's yes. that transition been for you? It's been wonderful. Uh, I, I grew up in Virginia in a smaller uh, town before I moved to Denver. Okay. So I had both a little bit of experience in, in a smaller, a smaller more intimate town mm -hmm. and a bigger metropolis. So coming back to arguably a smaller town in right. Chico still felt very comfortable. Yeah. And how's the reception been with uh, Sierra Nevada Brewery? How did that get started and end up in Chico? Well, our, our founder, his name is Ken Grossman. Right. And he grew up in Southern California, but found his way to Chico in the mid 70s and mm -hmm. he had learned to homebrew at a pretty young age and he actually started a, a homebrew shop. We want to talk about how young that was. Yeah, he, he started a homebrew shop when he was in Chico and okay. in conjunction with running that homebrew shop he was starting to, to build his own brewery, what became Sierra Nevada and it's something that he truly built from scratch. He, he salvaged old dairy equipment and, wow. and built and, and learned welding and refrigeration and physically hand built his first brew house. Wow. And that's ultimately what he started brewing on in 1980 when Sierra Nevada officially began. Wow. So where are you guys now? Tell us, I mean, obviously 1980s a while ago. Mm -hmm. So how has the business grown from that one in-home brewery to today. Tell us about what Sierra Nevada looks like today. Well, from the start, the, the reception to, to Ken's beers was wonderful. And, and yeah, over 30 plus years, we, we've grown considerably and we're, we're actually truly at capacity of what we can physically brew uh, in Chico. Wow. Which, and, and a large part of that is because of the success we have in California and especially in Northern California. It's, it's one of our largest states as far as just success goes. That just shows that we love beer here. Uh, we do. <laughs> it seems, it seems <laughs> we do. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, but we are, we do have a couple of exciting things that have happened or are on the verge of happening. Yeah, we are, good. we are building a second brewery in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and we've actually been test brewing beer there, and we're almost uh, ready to to share some of the beer that we've been brewing there. And we've been going through great pains to ensure it's exactly the same quality and consistency yeah. that folks expect from Chico. No, just to interrupt for a second, how did you decide that you were going to get to North Carolina? Like mm -hmm. that's, you know, completely on the other coast. Right. So are you, what, what was the point in doing that? Sure. And not just moving out like another county or something. Right, right. <laughs> well, uh, we do distribute in, in all 50 states. Our, our mm -hmm. beer is all over the country. And, and as much as we have uh, great success on the West Coast, we're seeing continual growth in, in craft beer along the East Coast. And Ken Grossman, our founder, has always been very mindful of operating his business sustainably. Yeah. And a big part of that is transporting beer. Trucking beer oh. all across the country uh, is, is quite the 
the resource consumer. Sure. So uh, part of going to the East Coast was was simply to have a place where we can we can brew beer and deliver it fresher and faster to to the folks who like our beer on the East Coast. In North Carolina, the place where we are, Mills River, North Carolina, has great water quality and it has a, a quality of life and, and sort of an outdoor recreational culture that very much mimics Chico. Yeah, we were trying to find a lot of what we fell in love yeah. with in Chico mm -hmm. in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So when is it actually open yet or is it, what's the status of the North Carolina? It's not yet open. Uh, priority number one was get a brew house up and running oh. and, and make beer and we're almost there. Mm -hmm. So in the next one or two months, we're hoping to actually send beer out the doors. But we'll have things like a tap room and a restaurant and brewery tours, just like mm -hmm. we have here in Chico in North Carolina, but that will be closer to the, the summer of, of this year. And so, that's probably, oh. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, it's yeah. probably because you've already got some other stuff going on here. We do. And, and Berkeley, so tell us a little bit about what you've got going on there. It's a little different than what you normally do. Yeah, right around Thanksgiving of this past year, we did open uh, a new tasting room mm -hmm. in Berkeley, California. So down in the Bay Area. And, and that's- Test that out. Yeah, you should, you should. <laughs> it's a great place. <laughs> And it's the, the idea of that space is it's, it's intimate. There's only about 50 or so people that can be in there at a time. Uh, it's, it's educational in okay. spirit. And uh, instead of serving full pints, we, we do flights. We do smaller pours and we do a few of them. So you'll get four beers in front of you, smaller pours. And, and we want folks to, to engage with our staff to have conversations about how the beer came to be from barley kernel to the liquid uh, okay. in your glass. And there's a lot of beer there. That's, that's one of the cool things about it is uh, many folks, they, they know our pale ale, they yeah. know maybe our torpedo extra IPA, just a small handful. But uh, like in Chico, we have 19 beers on tap and wow. you'll get almost, you'll get 16 beers on tap in this Berkeley tasting room. So it's a wow. chance to see all the experimentation yeah. we truly do. Mm -hmm. So how yeah. many of like those 16 beers that you have on tap, how many of those would end up in a bottle in a, in a yeah. grocery store? Uh, a select few of them. <laughs> so and how do you decide which yeah. ones do end up in a bottle? Well, we, we test brew quite a few things mm -hmm. on, a, on a smaller brew house we have. It's, it's just smaller uh, amounts of beer, and, and it's just an opportunity to say, is this good, is it not good? Uh, and it may be something that we share in the tap room or, or down in mm -hmm. Berkeley, yeah. but if, if it's a resounding success, we might explore scaling it up to a full production level and putting it into bottles. So I think that's actually kind of nice because you are listening to your customer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, I mean, but, but mm -hmm. a lot of people say they are, and you're actually doing, you're taking, taking these small, you know, amounts of beer and then saying, do you guys like this or not? And let's see if mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. make it scalable it's on a like, large It's pretty scale. cool because it's a test market that yes. they are paying you to test market. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, test you don't have to you. pay them. <laughs> they pay you to be able to say, yeah, I really like it or no, this is not good at all. But I'm kind of excited because yeah. you've this last year, 2013, was quite a banner year for your company. Mm -hmm. yes. And with the economy, you read all about, you know, everywhere else being in the business. doldrums, right? But yeah. you guys, in fact, a number of people on our shows, Sarah Fergoso, who's going to be on later in the program, she is, has had another banner year. I mean, you guys, what's going on? And what are you doing? And what do you attribute your success, this outstanding mm. success this yeah. year, last year, too? Well, craft beer, U.S. craft beer in, in general is, is just having a great reception across the country. Uh, and in and, and a time when there is a down economy, it seems like what folks do uh, save some of their money for are, are some of these uh, products, the, these dependable products, like a good quality craft beer. Uh, and, and that's part of what our success is, the, the consistency and the quality, okay. uh, going, going through those great pains to make sure it's the exact same every time. Uh, so people, I, I think, have, have, have learned to and come to trust us, and we hope they would, right. uh, be, because we want to give them the, the great beer, the same great beer every time. What's interesting to me is, and, and I think that maybe you might want to explain this for viewers, is that um, craft beer is similar to making a fine wine. And so can you kind of, exp not similar to making it, I should not say that, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's kind of the same concept as far as tasting and the flavors and like how in depth it can get. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit about that? Because I don't, I don't really drink beer, but I know that the craft beer industry, like you were saying, is, is sure. picking up. Has that always been around? Is that something that is kind of exploding now or mm -hmm. are we watching that? How well, happened? right now there are, there, there's ballpark and, and, and this figure changes frequently because there are so many craft breweries opening. There are about 2,500 
breweries, craft breweries throughout the United States. And when Ken Grossman, our founder, started our brewery in 1980, mm -hmm. there were maybe 40 wow. throughout the country. Wow. So there's been quite the, the rapid positive trajectory over the past 30 yeah. plus years. Uh, but but you're right, there there is a lot of complexity and in, in flavor that you can get from beer, which is really interesting given there are only four main ingredients of water, a malted barley, hops, and yeast. You can accomplish a lot with just those main ingredients oh. uh, because you're, you're, you have different hop varieties that have different aromas and flavors. You have uh, malted barley that you, you roast, much like coffee beans, to different intensities. You might have a very light one. You might have a very dark one that's more chocolatey. Oh, and wow. yeast strains differ quite a bit. Hmm. Um, a, our, our, what we call our house yeast, the yeast, the yeast we use toward pale mm -hmm. ale, has a very different flavor, contributes very different flavors than a Belgian yeast, a, mm -hmm. a yeast that actually comes from Belgium mm -hmm. and will give you more uh, clove and banana and spicy character to it. Oh. So, so when you look at a shelf of craft beer, there is just a myriad of flavor and aroma spread among those bottles. The, uh, really this is fascinating because you just don't think, it's definitely different than the bud that they served when I was in high school. <laughs> or, I mean, of course that was- Not in high school. Not to me, of course, no. No. But, <laughs> no. no. Back to what I was gonna ask you, which is, uh, you guys are, when I drive by the Sierra Nevada Brewery mm -hmm. there in Chico, on the left of the showroom of the restaurant, you see these green things hanging and growing. Mm. And I have a feeling that you're gonna, you could tell us, our viewers have probably wondered, what is that that's growing over there? We, we have eight acres of our own hops that we grow. We have, we have actually a fairly robust agriculture department, agriculture team at mm -hmm. the brewery. We, we have eight acres of hops that we grow. They're a perennial plant. They come around each summer, uh, toward the end of summer, beginning of fall is when yeah. we harvest them. We have a two acre garden on site that the, oh. the produce from that two acre garden goes right back into our to restaurant. restaurant. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. And about two miles away from the brewery, uh, we, we grow some of our own barley as well, which wow. ultimately we have one beer that we call a state ale, which is all of our own ingredients, our own hops, our own barley, uh, and our own house yeast that we've used for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And what? just before, just before, sorry, before we run out of time, I do want you to explain the hop torpedo, and I do Hi. want to make sure that we say, in Berkeley, the uh, the tasting room is mm -hmm. called the torpedo room. The torpedo is that? room. The torpedo Correct. room. So if you're ever in Berkeley, go check that out. That'd be a and lot of fun. The torpedo room is named after a device we simply call the hop torpedo, <laughs> and, and it's a way to impart more hop aroma and flavor to a beer without adding more bitterness. Uh, oh. So we, we have a stainless steel vessel. It's just, a, it's just a tall stainless steel column and we pack it with about 80 pounds of hops, oh, wow. a lot of hops. Wow. And we attach it to our fermenters. So as the beer is toward the end of its whole process, we're circulating that beer out of the fermenter up through that column of hops mm. in the hop torpedo and back into the fermenter in this cycle. So, so you don't get that bitter beer face? Correct. Do you guys remember those commercials? Yeah. I love <laughs> yeah. No so it, it's all about aroma and flavor. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to add any more bitterness, but uh, we can we can adjust the aroma and flavor. Uh, oh, wow. and that's pretty unique. Factors. That torpedo is unique. It is. Unique. It is. So if people want to know more, obviously Chico has got your yummy restaurant. You can yeah. take a tour. Berkeley, you can go to the tasting room, yes. or you can go online. And that website. It's simply www.sierranevada.com. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for thank coming. You. We really Very enjoyed much for having, having you. Very educational. Thanks for watching, and we're going to be back in a few minutes with the second half of our show. Hi, and we're back with Nancy Swift, who's the executive director of JEDI, which is the Jefferson Economic Development Institute, and it is a nonprofit that's in Siskiyou County, providing resources for people in the community. So, so tell us more. Yeah. <laughs> what is Jedi, That's first of all? Funny. I mean, I always think it's like something from uh, Star Wars. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Jedi, tell you, us about it. What is it? Um, that's a, uh, obviously, that's not exactly what we are, yeah. but we, yeah. um, I think that you could say that some of the entrepreneurs that we work with, they have that sort of evolutionary warrior spirit, and so do Aww. we. So, um, and it's um, memorable, so that's great. <laughs> Yeah, and it's meant to reference the uh, territory, mm -hmm. so the northern part of the state, although it's not connected to the social secession movements at all, please. Um, we're here to help businesses start and grow, and um, 
It was a nonprofit founded by entrepreneurs in 1996, and there are people that said, boy, the economy's really changing up here. We're really losing our major industries, and we're all hurting, and we don't know what's coming next. And um, in the face of that, though, these were people who had started businesses and were creating jobs, and they said, we know that one of the ways people are going to be able to make it is for them to start a business of their own. So let's help them think about what it would be, what makes sense, yeah. um, and where are those great ideas for our new future economy going to come from? Well, they're going to come from people with ideas, and those are entrepreneurs. Yeah. And so starting a business in Siskiyou County and in, and in a rural area, um, they're a little bit different market challenges. Right, but, absolutely. Uh, and that's the nice thing about the entrepreneurs being from that area. They understand it, and they can kind of guide you through, right, for the industry in Siskiyou County. Is that the point of the entrepreneurs getting together? Um, our services are, we have many different kinds of services. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if we're targeting starting a business, then we have um, a class that we've taught for 15 years now with the College of the Siskiyous called It's Your Business. Mm -hmm. And it's entrepreneurial development class and our, our um, counselors are also adjunct faculty at the college. So that's mm -hmm. one way we've been able to continue mm -hmm. to offer it. And the idea behind that is you have a great idea, come test it out here. Right. Mm -hmm. You think you have enough customers? Well, let's find out if you do. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand that you're in public relations. Yeah. And so how, how on earth do you learn how to talk about who you are right. and what your business is? Because certainly mm -hmm. for self-employed people, you're talking about yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the class, um, that's one class. We have lots of workshops. We have, um, I, I can talk about some of the other special s services, but um, everything's targeted towards helping people who want to be self-employed or who are already self-employed. Um, a third of who we worked with last year had a going business. They'd been yeah. in business for more than two years, but they were thinking, oh, I kind of want to try this product line, or I really want more sales. What am I doing wrong, or what can I do more of? Mm -hmm. and Would so you liken yourself to like SCORE or the Small Business Development Center? Like, How, how would someone who has not had access to Jedi, how would they be able to find out what you're, what you're all about, what all you encompass? Yeah, um, the best way that we know how is to invite them to our class or talk to somebody who ha who's already experienced Jedi, because those are the okay. best sellers. Um, the Small Business Development Center and SCORE and our Local Economic Development Council okay. and um, financing resources like Superior California, right. those are all our partners because oh, they serve okay. Siskiyou County as well. Mm -hmm. And um, But what makes us a little bit different yeah. is that we're community-based and we're all about the relationship between us and the entrepreneur and the, the entrepreneur's goal in terms of um, what kind of business they want to build. It, are, are they a single mom and they need a little bit extra money and it needs to, their business needs to be able to be done during school hours? Yeah. Are they, um, is it somebody, um, we, we have one of our most famous businesses was a, a couple that lived in McLeod and they said, we love this area. We love water, we love trees, we love this area. We want to build a business that can sustain itself and also create employment in McLeod. So McLeod's an old mill town. Right. They got into the re, um, reclaimed lumber industry oh, and they mm -hmm. knew how to go out and find lumber from crazy places and remill it and build houses and office wow. buildings with it. And they ended up creating 35 living wage jobs wow. as well as that's their profession in their career. They're, they've mm -hmm. gone on to do other things now, the people that started that company, but um, that's a kind of business, I mean, that's the biggest kind of success story because sure. you've got big employment and you have somebody living their passion. Um, so the businesses come in all shapes and sizes and um, Jedi services really accommodate that. Okay. And the other is that we're, we are community based, so we're there 24-7 right. with the businesses in the community. Yeah. Um, we draw on the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, whenever we can. They have specialized expertise in getting uh, state contracts because that's another right. really sure. um, mm -hmm. helpful mechanism for, for businesses to find new sales. And um, so we partner and we try to do what our training and technical assistance, um, which we do really well, and then uh, help people access the, the right other resources. Yeah, the right so resources. What, what so SCORE doesn't really practice much in our territory. Sure. There was a SCORE representative, but not now. But the SBDC does. There are SBA loans there. Right, okay. Um, there's and, and also local lenders banks. and local banks. So what kind of services do you provide? And just to clarify, JEDI, we've been saying the ac it's an acronym, right, for Jeff Jefferson? Yeah, Jefferson um, Economic, Economic Development, Development Institute. Okay. Where so, potential becomes prosperity. I love I that, that logo. <laughs> where potential becomes prosperity. Yeah. And so that's a differentiator. I, I think um, somebody once 
characterized our services as, um, oh, you bring hope to our community, and Aww. and and we want to bring measured hope, obviously, yeah. obviously, but um, it's a can-do kind of place. Mm -hmm. People who want to start a business are really brave, and so we just really honor that. Yeah. So what do you do? What, what kind of services are you providing? Yeah, there's a whole list of them. <laughs> um, and certainly, now that it's January, we're starting out another round. But we teach, our, we teach two major classes with the College of the Siskiyous. I referenced one earlier, mm -hmm. the entrepreneurial development, and then also a financial management class. Because you're That's only going to manage yeah. your business the way you manage your personal finances. Right. So right. if you don't take money from your paycheck and put it into your savings for you and your dreams first, then you're not investing in yourself first, and you're not also thinking about all the important things you need to do with your money. So it, the class really, um, it's a nine-week class, and it's really a foundational piece for people that want to um, be thinking uh, prosperity in mm -hmm. their lives, whether mm -hmm. it's in their personal financial system uh, circumstances or whether they're going to be starting a business. So we have those two classes. Then we have workshops. We have a free monthly webinar every month oh, that um, talks about different business yeah. stuff. Uh, this month it's goal setting. Next month it's um, you know, really okay. using technology in your business. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you wow. use email? Because if you don't, you're missing the boat. And <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of different, yeah. very simple technology things that businesses could do more of. Um, cre uh, financing, where, where, how can you think about raising the money that you need for, for your effort? Now, how do you differentiate people who come in and you have something where you talk about micro businesses and small businesses? How do you differentiate which is which? That is a very technical question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Does no, it matter the difference in funding out. and so forth the di between a micro business versus a small business. It's terrific. So, micro yeah. came about because the Small Business Administration defined a small business as a business of um, 500 or fewer employees oh. with oh. annual sales of two million dollars <laughs> or more. So, nice. when you look in Siskiyou County, 90 percent of the employment comes from a business of 10 or fewer people. Yeah. Wow. So you have to differentiate a little bit from those big corporations right. because a self-employed person or an entrepreneur or a small business with 10 em employees, they, they just, they breathe differently. Right. They sure. act differently in the marketplace yeah. Yeah. and they have different needs. So that's, um, and also our roots are, um, it's interesting as you do economic development in a rural area and you think about, well, this has social benefit, but it also has economic benefits. Right. So we get torn in two different directions. But microenterprise has roots in ensuring that everybody has equal access to participate in the economy, especially, um, you know, 20 years ago, women's wage rates were much lower. It's interesting now with the new Shriver report, some of the information that we're th looking at and reflecting on right. where we've progressed and where we mm -hmm. haven't. But so, um, Microenterprise and the definition micro business sort of has roots in the women's equality movement uh -huh. and also in, um, I mean, it's kind of crazy, but I live in Siskiyou County because I had a mentor whose name was Muhammad Yunus, and he won a Nobel Peace Prize for starting the Grameen Bank, which was a bank owned by rural people lending to each other, primarily women. Wow. And those huh. small loans made huge differences in their lives, both politically and monetarily and th so that was 20 years ago so the, and that's the sort of the beginning of microfinance wow. but in Siskiyou County this woman was running a program that was modeled after this bank in Bangladesh oh. and I said oh. how could California have anything to do with Bangladesh yeah. so mm -hmm. I came to study that and then they asked me to stay and run it oh. and then there was oh okay I'll stay 20 ah. years later I'm still here so then you must so. have been instrumental in getting Michael Gerber to come up who wrote the e-myth do you remember that? That oh, was back yeah. in the early two, like two thousand one, maybe. Yeah. So he's like big time of, author. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that book is known all over the yeah, world, and yeah. you got him to come speak in Mount Shasta, or was it in Mount it was, Shasta, or in? It was in Weed at the College of the Weed. Yeah. It's a couple of people, but Joanne Steele was primarily responsible for getting that. So if that she's was watching. So she needs neat. to. <laughs> yeah, I but would just so invite her, and oh, I yeah. was like, "Holy cow! They're getting Michael Gerber. I'm going to drive up for that. Oh. That was awesome. Yeah, I'm." People come, we, we, we're trying to get inspiration. Michael Schumann has also come. He's mm -hmm. somebody that talks a lot about local economies and you can, you entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. us, we as people can rebuild our economies. We don't have to wait always for some corporation to be that answer for us. Right. We can be doing it right here. So we, 
um, he was another inspiration for a lot of communities in Siskiyou County. Is that sort of the tie-in for the individual accounts? What Tell us about that just really quick. We're running out of time, but I want to know what... The individual development accounts, yeah. yeah. So, um, JEDI offers primarily training and technical assistance, but through the years we've been able to um, raise money to give grants for technology to businesses, but then also we started to focus on... Um, okay we need to increase incomes but we also really need to help people build their assets mm -hmm. as a means to really improve their economic situation so individual development counts are a way that you can do that so at jedi we also sponsor a, a, a an irs sponsored volunteer income tax assistance program mm -hmm. and that you can get free tax prep and then let's oh. say you got earned income credit from that those taxes you could then invest that in the match savings account oh, okay. and then JEDI will match those funds for you and we've raised money from other public sources and private sources and we'll match it um, two to one up to fifteen hundred dollars uh, two to one um, two to one yeah it's been different rates at different times wow. but two to That's one amazing. so you put in a dollar and you'll end up getting two more dollars towards your business investment well Nancy right. thank you so much for coming oh my this gosh this has just been <laughs> Thank you so a delight. much. There's so much to talk about. It's hard that we can't get it all covered, but we are thrilled. Thank you for coming. Jedi up in the north. Check it out. <laughs> Thanks for watching the forum, and we hope you have a great week. Serving the North State since 1858, Scott Valley Bank is proud to support original local programming, including the forum on KIXE. Scott Valley Bank, member FDIC. I'm Karen Hoyt, Marketing Director at Shasta Regional Medical Center, and we're proud to be part of the conversation that the forum at KIXE is bringing to our community. Shasta Regional has been around for more than 60 years supporting our community, and we would like to invite you to be a part of the forum on KIXE. Together, we can support the community that gives us back so much. Thank you.